So the most common real life example of two dimensional collisions is in, in billiards. Um, when you're hitting uh, uh, the white ball to hit another ball and you're trying to sink it into a pocket. Um, what actually uh, happens, and this is just going to be given in my video, but a, a true uh, uh, result is that um, if this isn't a pure head-on collision, so a head-on collision meaning that these hit exactly so that they stay in this axis, um, as long as the one ball hits the other just slightly off like this, then you're going to create some kind of fallout like this, and that's just, you can logically picture that. Um, if these are the same mass, uh, if you, you can go through the uh, equations of momentum and kinetic energy for an elastic collision, um, this is actually always 90 degrees. Um, and just a result of, of, of the beauty of physics of those two equations. Um, this actually becomes a very important strategy in, um, in billiards. Um, you always eye the ball so that you want to hit uh, you, you, you look for this point of this ball, and you know that it's going to move in this direction. So you're uh, intuitively uh, seeing that perpendicular angle. Um, so a lot of billiard players know this. Now let's do some actual uh, solving of problems here. Um, so in this problem, we have a one kilogram uh, billiard ball, the white ball traveling two meters per second. And it's going to hit this one kilogram uh, ball. Um, and it's going to uh, shoot off at an angle of 30, which you measure. And you want to know the speed and direction of the, the initial ball after that collision. So we know that this is a 90 degree angle, um, so we know that this angle is 60, and then we can start to write our equations. Now you realize that um, the ball was initially just moving in this direction, and now you're creating movement up and down. Now that doesn't seem possible because um, there was no movement up and down in the initial before the collision, and now there is. Um, and so the way to resolve that um, through physics is to say that um, momentum is conserved before and after the collision, so that the momentum up and down afterwards has to, e has to be equal to zero, which means that the momentum of this ball in the upwards direction is going to uh, cancel out the momentum of the initial ball going downwards. So we can immediately write that equation. Here we're only caring about kind of after the, the collision. Um, M2, which is this, times its V2. Um, if this is V2, final, uh, let's just call it V2, and this is V1, which you don't know, um, then that component upwards, um, according to this angle, is going to be sine 30. It's going to equal the downwards component of this momentum. So that's M1 V1 cosine 30. And we're going to use the same angle here as that. Um, so we know this is 60, so let's just write this now as sine 60. Um, so we can start to solve this. Let's look at the other uh, aspect of the momentum now. So we've conserved momentum up and down, but now let's conserve momentum straight out um, in, the, in the horizontal direction. So if this were a completely head-on collision, then you know that this will transfer all of its momentum to this ball. This one will stay still and this one will keep going. And we see this happening all the time with a perfect shot and pull. Um, but then if they're a little bit off, now both balls are moving in that direction. So you're going to um, think intuitively that the value of this velocity is going to be less than 2 um, because some of it is going to be kept in this ball. Um, so we can write it as this horizontal momentum, which is all of it, um, m1, v1 initial, it's going to equal the horizontal momentum of this one. So we already figured out the vertical component, now we write the horizontal component as m2, v2, cosine 30, and then we want to write, add to it, add the horizontal component of this ball, which is going to be um, m1, v1 times um, cosine 60. So, um, now uh, we can solve because we, we can figure out all our unknowns. Our unknowns are V1 and V2. So, in this case, we can start plugging in numbers. We have um, ones, so all the m's are, are ones, so for the purpose of algebra, we can get rid of them. And now we can substitute, um, we can write V2 in terms of V1 uh, from this initial equation, uh, this being 1 half this being rad 3 over 2. So v2 is going to equal 
um, one half v1 rad 3. So I'm going to take that and put it in here. So then our initial here is 2 meters per second. It's going to equal. Take this, plug it in v1 rad 3. Cosine 30 is rad 3 over 2. Plus v1 cosine 60 is 1 half. So now we can solve for v1. This comes out to be 3 over 2 plus 1 half equals 2. So v1 equals 1. 1 meter per second. So think of it this way. The, the initial ball had a velocity of 2 meters per second. It hit this ball. And now in this direction, it's, it's traveling at half the speed. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that this one's half the speed, because now we're thinking in two dimensions. So let's now take this back into here. And solve for v2. So v2 is equal to 1 times rad 3, which is rad 3. So let's look at very carefully what happened. The initial was 2 meters per second. Then you'd split into 2, split into v1 final, which became 1 meters per second, v2 final, which became rad 3 meters per second. And these look like random numbers, but you see that the process was um, we split it into the horizontal and vertical components of momentum, conserved in both ends, and we reached this conclusion.